Okay, so what we've got is 32RH or a 904 999 transmission. Um, I've got it pulled out of the Jeep, um, and I'm going to show you how to disassemble it, and I'm going to do it fast. Um, partly because I'm irritated that I've already put this thing back together once, and I didn't film any of the reassembly or disassembly steps, so I'm going to make up for lost time here. I dropped the clip off the torque converter solenoid um, lockup thing. The clip fell off, and it went down into the bottom of the transmission, so I've got to pull all this out to get it back out. So that was a rookie mistake. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Okay, so I've already got the pump out, um, and maybe I'll film that later on, and I'll show you how to, uh, what it looks like to pull that out. We're going to take out the valve body. We're going to take out the drums. We're going to basically take out everything other than the rear, the low servo band, um, which you'll see when we get in there. Um, but first things first, we're going to take out the uh, valve body. And it, uh, the manual says 5 sixteenths, I think, but it's actually an 11, at least in my transmission. Area over here for all this stuff. All right, now the valve body comes off relatively easily once you take those bolts out. Um, oh, we also need to take out the neutral safety switch. For me, this is a one inch, although I already had it loose. Take that out. Um, should have a washer that comes with it, so don't lose that. Okay. The body is gonna more or less lift straight off, but the parking rod is actually through here, and so we're gonna have to make sure that it clears, as well as we pull this shift selector up through the seal. So, uh, pull that up, and then the parking rod comes out. Sometimes it's harder than that, this is the parking rod and it slips into this hole down here. So that's where it comes out of. Okay. <coughs> All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to loosen the, um, the front band so we can pull out the drum. Now that is, takes a, it's got a square end so I've got a um, a crow foot that of a particular size, eight millimeter crow foot over here now. To loosen that band. Right, get here. No. I found All right, come in here. So I don't know if you can see that band loosening and the drum sort of falling out. It's not actually gonna fall out, it's just gonna fall down. So I'm going to take this adjuster screw all the way out. My goodness, a lot of threads on that thing. Holy cow, okay. And that right there. Okay, so now this whole assembly is free to come out. Um, and now this is might come out in two pieces, might come out in one, I'm not sure. Well, I guess I have to take the band out first. Okay, come over here, see. I need to take this strut out. The strut is what sort of puts pressure on the band. It fits right in there. So now, probably, yes. So, both drums came out. So this is actually two pieces. Okay, the sun's in the way. Here. Okay, we are over this side then. Here, can you kind of see it? This is actually two pieces. Oh. This is the front drum with all the clutches. The clutches inside there behind that pressure plate. And then here's the rear clutches, <coughs> which are in here behind a pressure plate. There's also two thrust washers that go inside here. So let's go find them. Right in here. The two thrust washers look like this. One of them is a normal washer, and the other one's got tabs on it. Now this is this one is keyed. It will only fit one way in the back side of that. So I'll show you. Does not fit. Does not fit. Oh, it does fit that way. Mm -hmm. I'll rotate it one more time to test the third position. Mm -hmm. It's kind of in the way. Oh, sorry. It won't fit. 
It only fits this one way. Got that? Yep. Okay. It's real important that those don't get misplaced when you are disassembling the thing. All right, the next piece <coughs> is, we're gonna go ahead and take this band out because it's gonna be in my way. Just compress that. This has got all the frictiony material that holds the drum from rotating when you're going to second gear. First drum. Okay. The next piece is this thing called a driving shell, which has a planetary assembly inside here. There's a C-clip that holds that to the output shaft. So we take our C-clip pliers. These are just my Harbor Freight C-clip pliers. You put it in there. See, clip comes out. Piece of cake. Oh, can't see it. Oh, it's here, right here. I'm gonna sit right there. All right. <coughs> Next, this planetary assembly comes off, and there is a tabbed thrust washer inside here that tends to want to stay behind because of all the ATF that's in there. So there's the tabbed thrust washer. See, so it's tabbed and it fits inside the back of this planetary. Just like that. There you go. So we'll set this right here. All right. Next up is the driving shell with the sun gear on the inside, and it just slides off. And there's a bunch of ATF in there. So I'm just going to pour that. This is absolutely fresh ATF. The transmission has never run. I'm just going to put that back in there like that. On the back side of the driving shell, there's another tabbed washer. Why is there another tabbed washer? Because inside here is another planetary. Every planetary has a tabbed washer that fits on the end of it, like this. Those tabbed washers are super important because those are actually thrust washers. I'll leave that here. To maintain the proper clearances. Here we go. So let's set this here. Alright, next up is the planetary that goes inside the rear, the final drum. This drum here is called the lower reverse drum. This planetary fits inside it and it has another thrust washer behind it. So this one goes on the back side, and this one goes on the front side. Another planetary. Set that here. Okay. Now there's a, I think they call that an annulus or a ring gear. That goes around that. So what we'll do is, We'll set this. Actually, the easiest thing to do is this. Now the thrust washer set. And the last piece is the rear, um, the lower reverse drum. Now behind that is a um, a one-way clutch or a roller clutch, or it's called the overrun clutch, and it's actually behind this thing and prevents this. It only spins in one direction, so to get it out. And I may have to, all right, there's a lock ring right here. Can you see that? Right here. That lock ring is holding that lower reverse drum onto the output shaft. Actually, it's holding it onto the uh, output support shaft, which is actually behind the transmission. So we use our lock ring pliers. Here, look at these. Sorry, lock ring pliers. Not that we can use the snap ring pliers. Right, snap ring pliers, you'll hate your life trying to get that thing off. This should make quick work of it. Famous last words, right? There we go. Lock ring off. I'll set that here. Those anymore. And now this drum should come more or less right off. 
through here and trying to clang it on everything in the process. No thrust washer on the back of that. Right. Lastly is this band, which we'll take out. I said I wasn't going to take out the, the lower reverse band, but I actually am going to. It just comes out like that. Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Okay. And then the last piece is we'll take out this um, overrun clutch, which looks like a, like a bracelet. It's got a series of springs and rollers, and sometimes these bearings pop out like that. No big deal. You just push them back in. Um, hopefully yours is in good shape because the replacement I ordered from Oregon Performance Transmission, this was plastic. And so I decided to clean mine up real good and reuse the one I had rather than go to the new one because I wasn't about to put something plastic in the uh, transmission when I had a perfectly good looking metal version. That thing will only go in one way when you go to reinstall it. And... <laughs> you found it. And here's the clip. The whole reason I had to un dismantle this transmission in the first place. <laughs> and I had to rebuild it. Right. That took 12 minutes, including narration. 12, All right. Technically 13. Okay. My camera says 13 minutes. So, that's how you take apart the drivetrain components. Um, I'm not going to show you how we're going to take apart the pistons. I've already done that. And I'm not going to show you how to take apart the governor, remove the output shaft. This was just how to remove the internals along the drivetrain. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.